Hi everyone, I am Dr. Muhammad Afiz, Ophthalmology, Kim Skarmer. Today I will be talking about pump and leak mechanism in the lens. Coming uh, first of all, we have to understand what are the different types of transport to understand the pump and leak mechanism. One such transport is called as passive transport. Here, the substance move from the substance move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration substance move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration here there is no energy required no no requirement of energy or atp is also called as downhill movement for example if you drop a stone or a ball from the high mountain it doesn't require any, any energy to come down it's a passive movement another way to understand it is from the rich towards the poor if you know what is uh, socialist type of government or uh, communist type of government it tries to mend, it tries to uh, remove the difference between the rich and the poor so we can compare this passive transport to the socialist type of government in a lighter on a lighter note the example for the wherein uh, the example for such kind of uh, passive transport are all ions in our context all ions water glucose lactic acid and carbon dioxide Le in lens what we want what exactly we want for the normal functioning of the lens is low concentration of sodium low concentration of the water water content should be low that is around 66 percent compared to the aqueous this is the aqueous surrounding surrounding part of the lens low concentration of glucose and a higher concentration of amino acid this is what normally required compared to the uh, compared to your aqueous the concentration of the sodium should be low and glucose should be low that of the water should be low in quantity and amino acid should be higher this is what we want in the lens now coming to what is active transport is the transport from the lower concentration usually from the lower concentration to a region of higher concentration and it requires energy or atp for example if you want to move the ball from lower position to a higher position you spend energy against the gravity you spend energy against the gravity so energy is spent it is also called as up uphill type of movement uphill type of movement in the example what we have given as a socialist for passive here we can tell it as a capitalist where money is involved what is the currency currency of all biological processes is nothing but atp biological currency or energy here energy is used or the money is used to extract from the poor the services from the poor this can if uh, socialist on a lighter note i'm not uh, i I'm, I'm i'm not economist to tell what is socialist and what is a capitalist on a lighter note if you compare passive transport to socialist or communist you can compare active transport to capitalist what are the substances which uh, are involved in active transport in our context it is once again sodium and potassium ions we told that ions are involved in passive transport but it's also involved in the active transport other than that you have taurine inositol and amino acid uh, on the whole passive trans any any substance can go for undergo passive transport but of active transport only selected few now what do we do want in the lens and why what do we do want we told we need a lower concentration of sodium but what do we do want is the higher concentration of sodium inside the lens or a higher concentration of glucose inside the lens see wherever sodium goes wherever sodium goes water goes is like husband and wife wherever sodium if the sodium is higher concentration that was water will be higher if sodium goes in to dilute the sodium water will come so if there is a higher concentration of sodium than the normal inside the lens it causes the passive diffusion of the water along with the sodium which causes the uh, lens to swell 
into mesens. Along with the lens fibers, it will swell, it will disrupt the lens fibers and the proteins causing cataract. It can, this condition can uh, progress the senile, uh, normal senile, uh, senile cataract formation. And glucose, higher concentration of glucose once again can cause diabetic cataract. We require a lower concentration of glucose in the lens, but the concentration of the glucose increases. It can cause diabetic cataract. If usually we require a higher concentration of amino acid for the normal functioning of the uh, lens. For example, I am. I mean, we know that lens is the highest in protein. Highest in protein. We know that lens is highest in protein. Highest in, highest in the body, highest density of protein is present in the lens. For that, we require higher concentration of amino acid in the inside the lens. But if the concentration decreases, there is, will be a decreased synthesis of protein and it will in turn affect your fiber formation. All those crystallines and albuminates. So what is, what is that which helps? What is that which helps from what we don't want in the lens to what we want in the lens and this this is helped by your pump and leak mechanism pump and leak mechanism now we'll see what is pump pump is nothing but an active transport what you have seen as an active transport the other name for it is pump usually active trans involves a uh, recept a transporter which is coupled with the some ATPs, energy is dependent. For example, sodium potassium ATPs, which in uh, which transport sodium to one side and potassium to the other side with the usage of ATP. Understood. And other pumps are amino acids, inositol pump. And it usually occurs, not usually, almost exclusively occurs in the anterior surface, this pump mechanism. On the other hand, leak is a diffuse diffusion or passive diffusion. Passive diffusion of any material, be it be ions including sodium and potassium, be it be glucose, be it be lactose and carbon dioxide, extrusion of this, this all occurs passively. And it usually occurs in the posterior surface but also in the anterior surface. This is what we should remember. Also in the anterior surface leak. Now we will see what, what exactly is happening. All these See, sodium is highest in the aqueous humor. High, concentration of sodium is high in the aqueous humor, and glucose is also higher in the aqueous humor. Prot amino acid is higher in the uh, amino acid is higher in the inside the lens. Understood. But through the leak mechanism, leak mechanism, sodium can enter the passive diffusion. See all the blue arrows wherein. Sodium can enter and along with that water can enter the lens. Amino acid can leave out from the lens because the concentration, see always passive or uh, your leak occurs from the higher concentration to the lower concentration so it can leak. Glucose can go into the cell. So all these things are, all these things are required to provide the necessary in, in, nutrients and uh, in and out. But what does the pump does? Pump tries to maintain the homeostasis all the excessive sodium from the excessive sodium which gets accumulated is simultaneously pumped out with the spending of energy by sodium potassium pump and uh, for amino acid there is an amino acid pump also there is an inositol pump which is pumping uh, pumping out of the uh, pumping these two pumping in of the uh, against the concentration grain pumping inside the cell now what happens to the glucose? What happens to the glucose? Glucose is a passive, only leak occurs there. So what, why, why the glucose concentration doesn't increase in the lens? That is because glucose is highly metabolized to, to produce energy, to produce energy in the glucose is highly metabolized to produce energy for the maintenance of all those metabolic activities and also ATPs, production of ATPs. And 90% of the ATPs, 
90 percent of the ATPs are used for these pumps. 90 percent of these ATPs are used. So the question of uh, glucose on the normal circumstances increasing is highly negligible. But it can increase when the aqueous humor concentration increases, such as in diabetes, when the aqueous humor concentration of glucose increases maximum, so the uh, concentration also increases in the lens. At that time, diabetic cat cataract can occur. On the whole, what we, uh, what we would like to conclude is both leak and pump, both are necessary for the proper maintenance of the uh, lens. Leak is necessary provide, to provide the essential nutrients in and out of the lens. But wh why, what pump is necessary? Pump is if, any side effects causing caused due to the leak is tried to is corrected by the pump by maintaining the homeostasis of the lens. For example, uh, whatever increase in the sodium inside the lens is extruded out from the uh, lens by the sodium. Okay. Now on question one question for thought if you see inside the lens try to calculate the uh, the positive ion and negative ion the difference between positive and ion, negative ion is very much high there is increased difference what is the reason what is the reason this is out of the scope of this uh, topic and it is not required as ophthalmologist now but if you try to find out the answer an important concept you will you can understand in your medicine class in future that is in the acid base imbalance so try to understand this why the concentration of uh, concentration uh, uh, see here uh, the concentration of sodium uh, and potassium is in 100 and the negative con negative chloride is also in 100 but here positive is in 125 but the negative is in 18 why that difference what is why that difference is there any really a difference if the, if it is not there why if it is there why try to find out the answer for this question you will you will, uh, you will get your mind into an important topic which you will come across in the final year Thank you. With that note, I would like to end this class, short class on uh, pump leak mechanism in the lens. Thank you. Thank you one and all. If any, if any doubts or any corrections, most welcome. Most welcome. If I know, with, if it is within my knowledge, obviously I will try to clarify it. And kindly share this and subscribe to my channel. Thank you one and all.